EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchich here with your outlook for January 20th, 2021. For your Wednesday, we're going to have snow showers around this morning and even a heavier squall or two moving through the region. And uh, th some of those heavier squalls could quickly whiten the ground or give you up to half inch, maybe even an inch in some spots uh, before it quickly moves through. So some of those heavier squalls will move through this morning, generally up to about 9, 10 o'clock. And then we will uh, get rid of the uh, snow shower opportunity, but we will have temperatures cooler today and uh, should be near average for this time of year, which is, of course, the coldest climatological period of the entire year. So temperatures generally in the mid to upper 30s across the region uh, with those uh, near average high temperatures. As we get over to the NAM, I just want to show you what the uh, th this impulse coming in has very strong vorticity and lift with it. This creates an added lift and that can make some of these snow showers a little bit more potent. As we start off at the high resolution rapid refresh here at 6 a.m., you see some scattered snow showers across the regions. Again, some heavier squalls up here off to the north, and that will continue to rotate down to the south as this moves, as the associated uh, cold front moves through, and we're going to have some heavier squalls move through some areas, and they're going to get pretty far southeast, it looks like, across central New Jersey at the very least. Uh, not sure if you're going to get those heavier squalls all the way down to, say, Philadelphia or southern New Jersey, but we'll have to wait and see how that uh, that plays out. But a lot of these areas here shown will get a quick coating to a half inch and maybe isolated up to an inch in some of these uh, higher locations or higher elevations, especially up here across north central northeast PA until that pushes through. And again, when this finally ends and moves off the coast here, uh, we're looking at about... Uh, uh, you know, about 9, 10 o'clock, okay? So we should be done with it by then, and then we just a few lingering flurries after that point, and that's it. So just uh, be aware of that this morning. If you're going to be driving and you run into these uh, snow squalls, I mean, it is intense snowfall rates and uh, windy conditions with those uh, squalls as well. So you can have some near zero visibility for a short time. You might just want to take it easy or you know, leave plenty of space in front of, uh, in front of you for uh, behind, in front of you. Uh, with a car in front of you, uh, so you don't, uh, uh, you know, can avoid any accidents and uh, just be aware of any rapidly changing road conditions. It's going to be cold, so it's going to stick to all surfaces, all right? So the roads are not going to be exempt from any of these uh, snow squalls or snow showers moving through uh, this morning. After that system pulls away, uh, we're going to turn much colder tonight. Temperatures getting down to on either side of 20 degrees, and in the interior, some parts will get down to the teens overnight. And then uh, partly to mostly cloudy, we'll call it here on Thursday. If you remember a while back, it looked like the uh, models were going to bring something into our region here on Thursday and give us a little chance of snow here. This is our one of our storm signals we had previously a few weeks ago. Uh, not going to work out here, but partly to mostly cloudy skies here with low pressure still in the vicinity. So that's going to be your, uh, your, your Thursday. Not looking at uh, much in the way of precipitation except for maybe across the far northern areas. Might get into some action here with uh, some a few snow showers uh, from this system off to the north that's over the southeastern Quebec province. Okay, so then when we get to Friday, it's going to be the same deal, same areas, maybe a few snow showers up there, but elsewhere are going to be partly to mostly sunny here on, on Friday. Uh, Thursday and Friday are going to be a little bit milder compared to today, but only by a couple degrees. So we're going to be kind of near to slightly above average both Thursday and Friday. And then we take a tumble this weekend as, tend to, as we get to Saturday. Uh, high pressure is going to move in. We're going to be mostly sunny. We're also going to be breezy on Saturday. Uh, by the way, today's going to be a little bit breezy too with some gusts up to 30 miles per hour as that system moves through the region. And we're going to duplicate that here on Saturday with breezy conditions expected there as well. But temperatures will most likely not get above freezing in many locations here on Saturday. And kind of hanging around freezing for the next couple days after that. We're going to be, this is our change period. We told you well, once we get to the 22nd, that's it. Uh, once down after that, we get into a colder couple of weeks. And it looks like it's going to be uh, taking shape as, as uh, early as Saturday here. And then once we get to Sunday, we are also mostly sunny. And then we're going to turn our attention to next week. Now, this is our storm signal. And there's a lot of different possibilities with this. So it's just a storm signal yet. Uh, something we've had listening to long range for a couple weeks now and have maintained it. This is that system. Uh, it's being modeled differently depending on what you're looking at exactly. Uh, this is the GFS's take. It takes a uh, very weak low and takes it up pretty far to the north here into the northern part of the Ohio Valley, maybe even up to uh, Lake Erie. And because of that, and it's a weak low, because it takes a, a path that far north, you have uh, some more, warm air overriding colder air at the surface as would be frozen precipitation, but it's not snow. I mean, it would start off with snow initially, very briefly it looks like, and then it goes over to sleet and then 
even some freezing rain. And in this situation, we have more of an icing event, not a major deal because it's not a very strong low. But then it eventually forces redevelopment. But this does so late on the GFS. And here's the late development. And by that time, uh, it's not going to help our area here. And you're left with, uh, you're not getting that uh, uh, the precipitation here on the backside from that low. So you're dealing with mainly an, uh, a snow to ice situation here on the GFS and just relatively weak uh, amounts of precipitation because these lows are very weak okay now that's the GFS's take there are some other options here like the European model that ran today and the latest Canadian model which is not shown but is very similar to the uh, European model that ran earlier today uh, takes a primary low much further south instead of being up here uh, over the northern Ohio Valley or over Lake Erie it's actually over eastern Kentucky by taking a path more like this and then when it runs in that block, it forces a redevelopment here to a secondary that's sitting off of the Carolina coastline right here. And it forces the redevelopment further south. In that case, you're going to get you're going to get snow, accumulating snow in these areas here uh, and mostly snow and not an icing situation. Again, this is what the Canadian this has support from the Canadian model right now. Doesn't mean that both of these are going to be correct or either one of these are going to be correct. And the GFS is wrong. It just means that we're, you know, we're definitely honing in on the idea that there's going to be some kind of wintry system here in the Monday Tuesday time frame. It's probably going to be later on Monday. Now the GFS is suggesting it's going to be a little bit earlier because it's a weaker system and it's a little more progressive with it. If it's a little bit more amped up and a little bit further south like this, you're going to know mostly snow situation because that uh, low forces redevelopment to a coastal here, and you have. Or not a coastal, but you have a, a, a redevelopment is, is off the coast here or near the North Carolina coast as it moves east. And you have primarily a snow event, especially uh, for the areas farther south that don't have as much precipitate, much snowfall as some of the interior locations do right now. So this is kind of favoring an area right in here when these areas that I'm circling here do not have as much snow as areas up to the north so far year to date. These areas benefited from that uh, big uh, December, mid-December storm. Whereas areas of the south started off as snow and then went over to other precipitation types. So it's focusing on these areas further south here for uh, both the European model and the uh, Canadian model. So if that's the case, again, these are detail, fine detail details we're going to have to go through over the next week here. And we are far from it. Today we're talking about something that's five, six days away. And a lot's going to change between now and then. And the ensemble runs are not really any help either. They're all kind of, they're all over the place. So do I think there's going to be a storm wintry system early next week? Yes. Do I know the specific details of it? Who's getting what? No. Is it going to be a big storm or small storm? Don't know. Is it going to be mostly snow and not ice? Don't know. Okay. These are things we're going to have to continue to watch and see how it evolves over the next couple of days here before we can get into any uh, any chance, any first stabs at this would not be until the weekend until we get a better handle on this. But right now, storm signals there. We'll continue to monitor it over the next several days this goes through tuesday so if you look at our local forecast it has a chance a 40 percent chance of snow on both days both monday and tuesday until we iron out these finally to do details in the coming days i'm epa wa meteorologist bobby marchers that is your outlook for january 20th 2021 have a great wednesday